Welcome to eFinancial Models. Today we like to talk about one important financial ratio, the return on invested capital, or in short, the ROIC. What is ROIC exactly? The return on invested capital is a profitability ratio that measures the return of the capital invested into a company. Let's look at the formula for calculating return on invested capital, ROIC. To calculate ROIC, we divide the net operating profits less adjusted tax, NOPLAT, by the invested capital. NOPLAT is basically the after-tax profit of a company without taking into account the interest expenses. Invested capital is the capital required to run this business. By definition, any capital that could be removed from the company without interrupting operations is excluded. The formula, therefore, answers the question of how much return the invested capital generates. There are some more important aspects to consider when calculating ROIC. NOPLAT is basically the same as EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, corrected for pro forma taxes on the profit. As you can see, both EBIT and NOPLAT are not deducting any interest expenses, meaning NOPLAT is not affected by financial leverage. Invested capital can be calculated from a company's balance sheet by adding the equity position to the financial debt position and deducting cash and equivalents included in the balance sheet. It is assumed that the cash could be used to repay the debt. Ergo, in reality, we are talking about investing capital is the same as the equity and the net financial debt from a company's balance sheet. Non-operating assets, for example, an investment in something unrelated to the company's core activities, should be excluded. Such assets are not needed to run the company and, therefore, also would not require the corresponding capital invested. Invested capital, in reality, varies between the start and ending date of a reporting year. Therefore, using an average of the beginning and ending invested capital will offer a more realistic picture. What does ROIC tell us? An ROIC of 12% tells us that when investing $100 into a company, a $12 profit can be generated. There are several implications for this. ROIC tells us the financial profitability of the company. We can compare the ROIC to the weighted average cost of capital, which includes the cost of equity and debt financing, and see if there was any excess return, or economic return, generated. We can compare the ROIC of different companies and directly compare their profitability to each other. So ROIC is a very useful metric in analyzing the financial performance of companies. ROIC is a vital profitability metric in finance. These are the reasons why we do want to pay attention to the ROIC. Profitability, we want to know how much will be or was the return on every dollar invested into the company. Economic profit, we want to know if our profitability exceeds our costs. We can do this by comparing ROIC to the weighted average cost of capital which is the return investors can get when investing in a company elsewhere with similar risk. Profit comparisons, we want to compare the profitability of our company to other companies. We can better do this when excluding the effects of non-operating assets or excess cash on the book of companies. Therefore, ROIC gives us a much better tool to compare profitability rather than using return on assets ROA, or return on equity ROE. Forecasting, when forecasting financial statements, we can also calculate ROIC. By knowing ROIC, we can also better understand if a financial forecast is realistic in light of the ROICs of similar companies. Target ROIC can also be used as a key input when using value driver formulas for estimating terminal value at the end of a five-year forecast horizon. What is the difference between ROIC and ROA and ROE? Return on invested capital is calculated by dividing the NOPLAT by the average invested capital. 
The financial ratio is not affected by the use of debt financing, unlevered, and gives us the economic view of a company's profitability. Return on asset takes a company's net income from the income statement, adds back the interest expense, and divides the total by the company's average total assets. Therefore, ROA is also an unlevered ratio, but this time profitability is calculated strictly from an accounting point of view. In case the company has a lot of excess cash or non-operating assets, ROA can become quite distorted. Lastly, return on equity ROE, divides a company's net income by the company's average equity book value. Same as ROA, ROE is calculated from a pure accounting point of view. If a company uses more debt financing, typically, ROE can go up. Therefore, ROE is influenced heavily by financial leverage, which makes it very hard to compare two similar companies. Now, let's look at an illustrative calculation example taken from a company's income statement and balance sheet to understand better how to calculate and use ROIC. First, we need to calculate NAPLAT. For this, we need to extract EBIT from the income statement and deduct pro forma income taxes using the income tax rate. This will give us NAPLAT, which reflects a company's operating profits after deducting taxes but without interest expenses. Now, we need to determine how much capital is invested in the business. We have two sources of capital, equity, and financial debt. To calculate invested capital, we add financial debt to the book value of our equity capital and assume that cash and cash equivalents can be used to repay the financial debt by netting the debt. We then calculate the average of the invested capital from the beginning and the end of the period. We can now calculate ROIC by dividing NAPLAT by the average invested capital. As we can see, ROIC ranges between 29 and 55% during financial years 1 to 5. So how do we know if this is a good return or not? We need to calculate the economic profit. First, we need to check a company's cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital needs to be estimated for each company individually. Visit the article on our website for more information on how to do this. Second, we need to compare ROIC to the cost of capital. The difference will be the economic profit. As we can see in the chart below, ROIC exceeds its cost of capital for all five years, therefore creating excess profits. If we could prepare financial projections, we would now have to analyze how long such excess returns can continue to last and take a view on that. This will help us better to understand the quality of a company's financial forecast. The next step would be to collect data from peer companies such as competitors to calculate their ROICs and compare them to our company. The below example shows such a comparison. As you can see below. The ROICs of all other companies are significantly lower than our company. This raises the question if our company does something significantly better or what the reason would be. Some of the other companies also have a hard time generating enough returns to meet their cost of capital, which would indicate a strategic problem with their positioning in the market. Calculating ROIC can help us to find real issues these companies are facing or validate the quality of a financial plan. As we have seen before, ROIC is a great financial ratio to calculate when analyzing a company. However, what are the limitations ROIC might have? Non-operating assets. Sometimes, it can be very difficult to identify and separate non-operating assets. Also, EBIT might, in some cases, include costs or income related to non-operating assets, which would need to be adjusted. Depreciation. EBIT and NAPLAT are calculated after deducting depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense that depends on the estimated useful life of an asset. Therefore, depreciation can potentially be manipulated, leading to an inaccurate calculation of ROIC. Business segments. When comparing the performance of business segments within a company, very often, ROIC is the profitability metric of choice. However, many times it is very difficult to break down the invested capital or NAPLAT by business segment, which might limit the usefulness of an ROIC analysis. ROIC can offer a very powerful tool for your next profitability analysis. 
In the description below you will also find a link to a free ROIC calculator spreadsheet template. We hope you liked this video. If yes, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. See you in the next video.